about collection of taxes and, and, and devolution of taxes. Okay, administrative arrangement. We talk about conflict resolution between the entities. Fine, this also. So this document can be valid for any part of the world, any country. Where is Bharat in it? And then, of course, certain measures were taken. They realized, yes, 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 Bharat must be introduced. And one of the measures taken was through pictorial depiction, through painting in our constitution, which tells about the civilizational evolution of Bharat. And the very first painting in our constitution, and then there were person like our great uh, painter of uh, Santa Niketan, Nandalal Bose. He and his team, they were commissioned to create the paintings which will depict the civilizational evolution of Bharat, which will be placed in the constitution. And they were placed. And our constitution, the first painting in our constitution was Vedic Gurukulam, period of Veda, from where our civilization begins. Here is a teacher, Rishi, teaching the students in a, in a pastoral environment. It moves on when it talks to fundamental right. What is fundamental right? What are fundamental rights? Right to equality, right to life, right to liberty. This is nothing but Ram Rajya. So the painting before part three of the constitution, fundamental right was but Ram Sri Rama's Pattavisekam, when he came back. Now our constitution is full of all these paintings. But unfortunately, these are nowhere found today. No one even talks about it. When I talk to senior judges also, is it so? Who will say? If you say you are ignorant, then, then who will be? The soul of Bharat is there in the constitution depicted through the civilizational, paintings of civilizational journey of Bharat. But this we don't talk about it. Even then, in the constituent assembly, one person, uh, one member, KT Sai, raised the point, what should be the state's disposition to religion? The entire constituent assembly was surprised at the question, that what is the, what a question you are asking, what should be? Because in, in this country, our disposition has been equal respect to all. Because after all, this is, when we say universal oneness, and myriad manifestation, myriad you know, expressions, then where is the need for a state to choose or not to choose? So the matter was dropped. The word was not used. But for some reason, during emergency, 1976, when the constitution was amended, the word secular was introduced. And even there, when the word secular was, was introduced in our preamble, the person who piloted the bill in the constituent assembly, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the parliament, was Swaran Singh, chairman of the Const constitutional review committee, who made all the committee that made all the recommendations, which became 42nd Amendment. And then, uh, while explaining in the Lok Sabha, and it is there in the, on the internet, you can just click it, it is on 26th, 27th of October, 1976. Looks of our debates, you will get it. When Swaran Singh, while introducing the amendment, introducing the word secularism, he mentions that as far as secularism is concerned, when he came to secularism, he said, at the very outset, I like to make it abundantly clear, I'm quoting his words, that our secularism, our secularism is not the dictionary meaning of secularism. Dictionary meaning of secular, the word secularism is an European construct. When there was a clash between the church and the state, when the state power was taken, a lot of powers of the state, the kings were being exercised by the church, there was a class, there was a hostility. And out of that hostility, there finally a truce emerged that okay, there is a boundary, this is where you will stop. And they put the word the secular. 
the concept that emerged that they say, what is unto Caesar, what is up to the uh, king, I mean uh, the God, the church. This separation was out of hostility between the church and the king. It was born out of, by, by a, out of a prolonged fighting, infighting between the two. There is no such thing in Bharat. So he makes it very clear. Swaran Singh, in his, in, his, in his speech, he makes it clear, our secularism is not European secularism, is not what is defined in the dictionary. Our secularism is equal respect to all religion, all faith. Now when we say that equal, equal respect to all, there is, it, it's a fundamentally different from to say that a state, we have nothing to do with the religion. Because it was made clear that a state cannot, cannot be separated from dharma. And that is why when secular word was translated in Indian languages, the word dharma was not used. They, even in Sanskrit, it was a pantha nirupeksh, pantha various sampradayas. A state does not hold on to one sampradaya. And even in Tamil, when the